Deuteronomy chapter number nine. Let's get to the reading. I'm only going to read um, three verses. And it says like this. It says, listen, O Israel, today you are about to cross the Jordan River to take over the land belonging to nations much greater and more powerful than you. They live in cities with walls that reach the sky. The people are strong, tall, descendants of the famous Anakite giants. You've heard the saying, who, who can stand up to the Anakites? But recognize today that the Lord, your God, is the one who will cross over ahead of you like a devouring fire to destroy them. He will subdue them so that you will quickly conquer them and drive them out just as the Lord had promised. After the Lord your God has done this for you, don't say in your heart, the Lord has given this land because we are such a good people. Let me say it again. After the Lord your God has done all of this for you in your 12 year, don't say in your hearts, the Lord has given us this land because we are such good people. No, it is because of the wickedness of other nations that he is pushing them out of your way. It is not because you are so good or have such integrity that you are to occupy the land. The Lord your God will drive out the nations ahead of you only because of their wickedness and because he promised somebody about you. All right, let me help you one more time. It's not that God is going to do it for you because you deserve it. It's not that God's going to do it for you because you have the rights to it. God's going to do it for you because he promised somebody else about you. Generations before you were even born, God made an agreement with somebody that was in your bloodline and said, I swear, I'm going to look after them. I'm going to make sure everything that I can do is for them. I want to talk to you just for about 15 minutes before my close. So my clothes add an extra 10. I want to talk to you about follow the fire. Follow the fire. Follow the fire. So it's 12 years. 12 years is an interesting number throughout scripture. There are the 12 tribes of Israel. 12 in scripture in the Jewish context is the number of maturity. 12, Jesus did not build a team he could have built a team with 10. He could have built a team with 13, but he built a team with 12. 12 in the Western world is the age that you start entering into teenagehood. But it all symbolizes one simple thing. If you're a part of this church, if you're watching online in a part of this church, if you're re-watching this, if you're a part of the local church context community, 12 is a number of maturity, which means that symbolically it's saying that we need to grow up because what he's saying is is that you're 12 now so there's some things that your kids don't do you ever talk to your kids about their age you're inferring that you're you're, you're 12 you're telling them without telling them that I expect your behavior to line up with your age no, no, you're 12 now. You're not 11, you're 12 now. So some of the things that you used to wrestle with, you shouldn't be wrestling with anymore. Why? Because you're 12 now. You're not 11, you're not 10, you're not 9. You're 12 now. We, we shouldn't be asking you to pray. You're 12 now. We shouldn't be asking you to worship because you're 12 now. When you're 12, there's a certain level of maturity. And God is speaking to a group of people who have been in a holding pattern. It is not where they know they're supposed to be, but it is a place preparing them for where they're going. And if you're not careful in the holding pattern, you can get what they call desert flu. Desert flu is when you've been in a season for so long in the desert that you start inhaling the environment that's around you. So here's what I'm saying to you. Even though you're in the midst of a transition, don't let the transition 
get into you. You must be observant to know that life is filled with transitions. There is nothing in life that stays static. Anything that stays the same will eventually die. So I must need to know that life is filled of transitions. However, I cannot allow the transitions of the desert to get into my soul because I will get sick from the environment that was supposed to make me better but ended up making me sick. So God is telling them that in transition, it could either make you better or it can make you sick. Determines how you and I handle the transition determines how it makes you. God will never use a season to be a waste of a classroom time. God will always use seasons to either teach you or force you to repeat. And because you're 12, we don't want to repeat seasons. And so we've got to be mature enough to know that transitions are necessary to get us from one place to the next. Now you and I must be attentive to know that not all transitions we like. Some transitions don't feel good. Some transitions say you're going to arrive at 3 o'clock and then you get to the airport and you find out because somebody else was late, your arrival is delayed, not because of anything you've done, but because of the decisions of other people. And you could either act up or you could just wait patiently and say, you know what, I know I'm going to get there eventually. I just need to learn how to manage this time in between where I'm going and where I am. And sometimes God uses transitions to slow you down, to perfect areas that you did not know needed to be perfected. So thank God you didn't get discovered in the season of transition. Because sometimes people meet you in transition and because you're not who you are going to be, they make an assumption based upon your transition space which is a dangerous thing to do because you cannot make permanent decisions in temporary places. So God looks at them and says, listen, y'all in the desert, this is not where I called y'all to be. Even though some of you may get accustomed to being in the desert and end up liking the desert. And some of you may have made investments in the desert and now when God is asking you to leave, it's hard for you to leave because you fell in love with something temporary. There's nothing worse than loving something that's not real. There's nothing worse than loving something that wasn't meant for you. There's nothing worse than not knowing how to understand what you have is a lease. At some point, you got to turn it back in. You can drive it as much as you want. You can use it as much as you want. But at some point, you got to take that lease and you got to turn it back into the owner. And it's the same thing with our lives. Our lives are leased a period of time where God says, I want you to do everything that I need you to do. But at some point, you got to turn your life back over to the owner. You got to give your life. You got to give yourself. And God says, I'm moving you, not because you want to move, but because I made a promise to someone else about you. But now here's what God says. One of the challenges of moving people is that people identify to where they currently are at. And they build sanctuaries where they should have only carried a tent. So he says, and he goes, he says, no, what I need you to know is where you are has always been temporary. It was never my plan to keep you there. I put you there to see how you'd respond and based how you responded in a temporary place determine what I would do in your permanent place. And he says, what I needed to do also is I needed to kill people off who could not transition with you. when you do this a while you start to learn that not everybody that starts with you has to finish with you and it doesn't make them bad people because they don't finish with you it just means that they finish their assignment in your life at that season and the reality of the matter is is some people have to move out so God can bring other people in but some of us are so in love with the people that are leaving that we don't get 
to embrace the new people because we're married to things that are expired. And when you love things that are expired, one or two things are eventually going to happen. Either you're going to get used to old, antiquated relationships, or your stomach is going to regurgitate it. And I don't want to get in a season of my life where I'm used to things that aren't moving, that aren't dying, but I am happy to be around it because they validate my need to be alive. Be careful when all your circles are dead and you're the only one that's the life. So he says, I, I'm, I'm going to move you out. Um, I'm going to move you across the Jordan. Because the Jordan is always a place in scripture that is symbolic of death. You will never go to the next level without a dying first. You will never grow. Any other, anything that I've ever seen God done has always been a dying first. God always wants to test, are you ready yet? And you know, have you ever got past the test and you thought you're good and then all of a sudden they do a surprise test and you're like, man, I thought I was done. And God always has a way of throwing another test just to make sure. I want to make sure that I'm not promoting you too early. Because if I promote you too early and you embarrass me, then it's not your name, it's mine. So God does these tests and he says, I I'm going I'm to test you one more time and it's going to be at the Jordan and I'm going to test you at the Jordan I'm going to bring you to a land and then I'm going to take you to the Jordan and I'm going to tell you you see that place? yes sir, it's yours yes sir, thank you but before you go into that beautiful palatial place you see it? it's nice, ain't it? It's got nice trees, palm trees, pomegranates. If you're from the islands, it got mango trees, all type of stuff in the backyard. He says, you see it? Yes, Lord. But before you go into it, you got all your nice clothes. Get dressed to go into it. Get dressed now. You got all your nice clothes on and you're about to transition into the nice space. And then God looks at you and says, you see the Jordan? Yeah, Lord, I see the Jordan. That water is nasty. It is dirty. It don't even look good. And God says, yeah, I want you to dip in it. What you mean dip in it? Now, well, you done told me to get dressed and all that type of stuff and you're going to ask me to get in some nasty while you must be out your mind period you must be crazy and God says no I want to see if you're dead because if you're dead you're able to say Lord I know that I got nice clothes on I know that I put all this money into it I know that I done did all this work but if you're telling me to dip I trust that you know more than what I know and I trust that if I can die to myself you will make me alive in another season that I really need to be alive and they go to the door and maybe God showed you promotion but you fell in love with the promotion as opposed to falling in love with the instruction the promotion is the result of obeying instruction promotion is not the gift the gift is your ability to obey instruction as a byproduct of your ability to obey instruction he gives you a promotion promotion is not what God has in mind what God has in mind is your obedience and the offset of that is you get promotion so let me say it this way if you seek God's heart you'll eventually get his hand it is not the idea to get his hand it is the idea that I am so in love with your heart that you just have no choice but to give me your hand be careful dating somebody that never gives you their hand because you really never have their heart because anybody that you have their heart you'll eventually have their hand and God's like if you try to go after my hand you'll never get my heart you'll never get what I have for you I will give you temporary things to make you think you have me and then remove it from you to always show you you never had me to begin with so here it is he says, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take you, I'm going to take you all to a land. But I need you to know the land I'm taking you to belongs to somebody else. It ain't even yours. You know, you might be tripping like, man, that belongs to somebody else, but I want my own thing. I want, I want my own stuff. But you do know, if you build, uh, in the real estate world, if you build a brand new house, you really got the euphoria of saying you're the first. 
but you don't have all the improvements that someone else makes when they live in it because when someone lives in a house a couple years they make upgrades that you probably would not have made your first year in there because you didn't know it needed to be made and so God is saying no I know you want new stuff but I just want you to know that they made all the repairs for you but now here's the only problem I'm not going to send you into a land that doesn't require you to fight because even though it's a promised land and even though it's better than where you were it's still going to require you to do some work while you're there so now don't go into the land and start complaining about the land because there's work because you could be in the promised land and start speaking like you're in Egypt even though your destination has changed and your location has changed this is why it's very important that if God doesn't change your mind he can change your location and you'll still think the same if God moves you from the ghetto into a wonderful neighborhood, but you still got a ghetto mentality, you'll have lines outside hanging your drawers, your boxers, your underwear, and letting them sun dry. And everybody talking about, man, you ain't got no washer or dry machine. Nah, player, that's how we did in the poking beans. That's how we did on, no. God is sitting and saying, no, this is not how I want you to operate. I want you not just to change location. I want you to change mentality. Because where I'm bringing you, I'm bringing you, church, into something bigger so you can start looking at where I moved you and start realizing if I move the building to this place, how much more can I move your life? Sometimes the only way God expands the capacity of people's faith is by throwing them into something bigger than themselves. You know why you ain't growing? Because you ain't in nothing bigger than yourself. And he has to throw us into something bigger than ourselves so that we can start looking at it and saying, this is too big for us. This, this, this is too massive for us. This, this by far is bigger than what I ever thought, imagined, dreamed, anticipated, wanted, even thought within myself, sketched on a piece of paper. If I were to ask you what dreams do you have, most of your dreams aren't even big enough for God to be included. They're so small, you can accomplish them by yourself. And God's like, I dare you come to me in a throne of grace and approach me like I have a chair of grace. You approach a throne, not a chair. You're approaching a throne, not a chair. You're approaching a throne. The throne should be an indication of how big I am, of how royal I am. I need you to go back and look at where I'm sending you. You're dreaming like you're still in Egypt. You're dreaming like you're still a slave. You're dreaming like you still need Pharaoh. God says I am sending you into a land that I am going to go no 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 the one thing God does very clearly is this he defines who's in the land he says I want you to know them boys in there who them boys them boys we them boys not the cowboys because they ain't them boys so so we 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 them boys who, who who's them boys the the anakites the anakites who are they? They, they, they remember saw how how massive he was he was a giant there are giants always there are always things bigger than you in what you're supposed to accomplish there there will always be things there that are bigger than you but god says here's the ingredient that you need to know I'm going ahead of you. And he says, when I go ahead of you, don't just walk in there by yourself. You need to follow me as I go ahead of you. So God says, how am I going to go ahead of you? I'm going to go ahead of you as fire. And he says, I don't need you to follow anybody else. I need you to follow the fire because the fire is going to show you where I'm leading you to and when it gets dark in your world just look up and follow the fire the fire will then be the thing that keeps you warm and the thing that gives you light no matter how dark the season is follow the fire yeah so he says now I need you to follow the fire because number one 
I'm going to go ahead of you. So if I went ahead of you, I already know what's there. So you don't need to act like you're surprised when you get there because I already told you what's there. I already told you when I, when I give you this job, you're going to get a coworker that's going to try you. When I give you this job, you're going to get a coworker that don't like you. When I give you this job, because some of y'all think y'all enemies are other colors. Most of the time, your enemies are your own color. And so he says, listen, the people that got their foot on your neck ain't the person that you think it is. It is the person that you ate bread with. It is the person that you dined with. It is the person that sat at your table. And he says, I, I need you to know I went ahead of you. But, but, but just know I went ahead of you. But then he says, I'm not just going ahead of you. I'm going alongside of you. Because if I go ahead of you and someone run up on you and I'm not alongside of you, I'll be too far ahead and you may get jacked. But I'm going to walk alongside of you and every step you take, you need to make sure your eyes are forward and you need to make sure that I'm close to you. Don't get so comfortable walking by yourself that you forget that you need me alongside of you because if I'm ahead of you and not alongside of you, you got problems. And he says, now nah, I'm not even gonna play with y'all. They some big boys. They some big problems. Problems you ain't never seen before. Problems you never encountered before. But I want you to know, you're gonna defeat them. You're gonna defeat everything that's standing in opposition against you because I am with you. No, it ain't gonna be who you know. It ain't gonna be your network. It ain't gonna be your credit score. It's gonna be because the Lord Jehovah went ahead of you. It's gonna be because the Lord Jehovah went ahead of you. Now, here's the thing. Now, when you start defeating the giants and they don't know, the days don't know how you're doing it, they're gonna start saying all type of stuff. I don't know how they've been doing it. I don't know who they know. I don't know who they're connected to. I don't know who's funding them. I don't know who's financing them. But you can't get caught up in what they say. You gotta get caught up in what the cloud says. I'm following God. I'm following him as he walks ahead of me and along. Now he doesn't just walk ahead of you. He doesn't just walk alongside of you. The text says he also works within you. He works within you. Let me follow the fire. So wherever you lead me, I will follow. No, no, wherever you lead me. Where, no, 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 wherever you lead me. I know you're talking about, no, he going to lead me into a girl. Let me take my selfie in the promised land. Girl, let me, man, let me take my, let me boss up in the promised land. Let me show him I got them breast stacks. I got the back. No, let me tell you something. Before you get to the promised land, God's going to make sure you're dead enough so you don't get into the promised land so that you can prove to your enemies you made it. God ain't promoting you for that. God's going to get you in the promised land because he made a covenant with someone else about you. says no right when you get there he says the people are strong and they're tall and they're famous they're strong they're strong they're tall and famous. Anyway, y'all didn't read the same text I read. They're strong, they're tall, and famous. No, you missed what I said. They're, they're, they're strong, they're tall, and they're famous. Now, you got to remember, Deuteronomy was written because Moses was writing to them as a farewell to the ancestors who were traveling into the promised land. And God was their king. And they started after a while in the book of Samuel and Judges, they started saying like, yo, we want to be like the other people. We don't want God to lead us anymore. We want a king. And because they asked for a king, God gave them Saul. It was never God's desire to give them a king. It was always God's desire to lead them. But because they got to a place where they started seeing other tall people, other famous people, other tall people, other famous people, and they started following the tall people. They started following the famous people as opposed to following the fire. And because they started following the tall and the famous people, God removed himself.
and allowed them to fight on their own. And God is saying, it doesn't matter how big they are, how famous they are, how much street cred they have. If you follow me, I will make sure you win every time. If you follow me, I will make sure you win every time. I know they did it this way. I know they did it that way. But if you follow me, I will make sure you win every time. Don't do it their way. Don't try to do it their way. You try to do it their way, you're going to get their results. You're going to get their same level of success. But if you just trust me, I'm going to do it in my own way. I'm going to do it in a way that's unconventional. I'm going to do it in a way that's not programmed, that's not famous, that's not popular. But I'm going to give you your own mold so that others can follow. Trailblazers don't look for fire. They start their own. Hear what I said. I said trailblazers don't look for fire. They start their own. And what the reason why most of us can't be used by God is because we're a duplicate of someone else that's famous, someone else that's tall. And God is saying, I just want some people that will follow me. It may not have been done before. It may not have been seen before. But God, I'm going to trust you and follow the fire. You'll be surprised if you suck up to God as much as you suck up to people. You tagging everybody on Instagram to get known. You inboxing everybody to get known. You telling everybody, well, y'all call me. I'm available. Baby, God says, if you follow the fire, I'll send people to you. I'll make your phone ring and you didn't even know it was going to ring. I'll make people email you and you didn't even know they were looking at you. He says, don't follow the pattern everybody else does. Follow the fire. Follow the fire. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Can you be daring enough? Can you be daring enough not to have a blueprint and create your own? No, I said, can, can you be daring enough to create your own blueprint. I mean one that was birthed from prayer. One that you sat before God and you said, God, I know everybody else is doing it this way. I know everybody else is doing it that way. But God, give me an instruction that's different than everybody else. Give me something that no one has ever done. Give me something that no one has ever thought of. Give me something that, no, I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want you to say, oh, you're just like such and such. Oh, you're just like, no, 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 baby. I want to be in a class by myself. So God, give me a blueprint that only I have that only I have the patent on or you can follow the pattern like everybody else when I started the church big preachers that were influential that were well known that were influential would say you know what you don't need a keyboard playing behind you because that ain't gonna work you know you gotta wear a suit and your know, first Sunday you gotta dress up and after a while you start trying to be in this box and you realize that when I die they're gonna put me in a box so while I live I might as well live outside the box I'm gonna do it the way God told me to do it I'm gonna do it the way God showed me to do it because I'm gonna follow the fire Follow the fire. You got to dare to be different. God will give you your own blueprint. I respect what you've done. I honor what you built. But I can't fight in your armor. I can't wear your clothes and do it. I can only do it the way God told me to do it. It may get lonely. It may not have points of reference. It may not have people you can call. But that's the good thing. Because it keeps you close to God. It keeps you close to the master. It keeps you close to a father that says, come on, boy. I've got another strategy for you. Come on, girl. i got another strategy for you. Come on. I'm going to introduce you to somebody that your money couldn't get you to. That your Rolodex couldn't get you to. Because you're following the fire. Here's the thing. God says this, and we're closing. He says, you will subdue them 
that you will quickly conquer them and drive them out. Don't get saved and think you stop fighting. No. 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 You need some Tangelo Park in you. You need some Pine Hills in you. You need some Mercy Drive in you. Because if you get so sophisticated, you're going to get walked out there. You will get beat down out there because the reality is, is that God will never give you anything that you ain't got to fight for. And just because you don't see my scars doesn't mean I didn't fight. Just because you don't see my battle wounds doesn't mean I haven't fought. And the reason why grace is deceptive is because grace will make people think that you never fought. Some of us have fought sickness and we won. Some of us have fought divorce and we won. Some of us have fought betrayal and we won. Some of us have fought backstabbing and we won. Why? Because all of it taught us how to follow the fire. So God lets you experience things in one season so that when you see it in the next, you don't trip. Oh, that? I done been through that. I graduated through that. Before I would have cried my eyes out, before I would have been frustrated, I would have been posting about it, I would have been talking about it. Now I'm like, that's, that's what y'all talking about? That's what you got? I graduated at that at six years old. I'm 12 now. I ain't six no more. I'm 12 now. You just need to text some people and be like, I'm 12 now. I, I ain't five no more. I'm 12 now. I'm older now. I'm more mature now. I'm wiser now. I'm 12 now. God has a land, the land metaphorically of a purpose, a destiny, and a will. You've just got to be determined enough to go for it. I don't care if your eyes closed because you got beat up so bad, you still got to fight. You got to fight. See, the reason why we come to church is, is, is a gang initiation. It's a spiritual gang, though. It's a gang initiation. It's a bunch of people who fought during the week that made it and came back to the ring to get more instruction. Everybody in this room has fought something. Mama just got sick. Daddy just got sick. Lost a loved one. Someone just acting out of character. But I show up because I need more instruction. I need, even if your marriage is falling apart, I'm going to hold your hand because I'm going to show up because I am not going to walk away. If I'm going to get beat, I'm going to get beat fighting. If I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose fighting. You might say he won. But you ain't gonna say I ain't get no punches off. You ain't gonna say I ain't get no hits off. And God says, where you fall short, I'll make up the difference. Where you fall short, I'll make up the difference. Where you fall short, I will make up the difference. Where you fall short, I will make up the difference. But he says, when you get there, he says, remember, I ain't do it because of you. It had nothing to do with you. Don't get in the place and think the land is about you. Because I can evict you from a land that I got you. So I'm asking you. I'm asking you. To transition with courage. Even though the promised land still has problems. And we're transitioning. It's a big promise land. It's got problems. But don't get to the promised land and talk like you're in Egypt. You've seen this before. You've done this before. God gave you training before. So go to the promised land and speak like you're in the promised land, not like you're in Egypt. So Holy Spirit, I pray that we've communicated and conveyed that which you've asked. We need to follow the fire.
because there's victory by God's grace when we follow the fire. So help me, help my brother, help my sister follow the fire. Help us to follow the fire. Help us not to fall in love with Egypt. Help us to love. Help us to love your instruction more than our familiarity. And help us to be okay. Help us to be okay in the spaces of the unknown. So Lord, when you take your church to a bigger place, cause it to get people who are part of it to be able to look around and say, God, if you pulled my church to this place, you're trying to pull me up to another place. So everything that I need is already done. Everything that I need is already done. Everything that I already need is already done. God, the people that I need, they're already there. The resources that I need, they're already there. The favor that I need, it's already there. Every, everything that I need, it's already there. You've already set it up. You've already arranged it. All I need to do is keep you alongside of me, in me, and watch ahead of me. So, Father, it's all I prophesy. It's already there. Everything that you need is already there. Every peace, every promise, everything that you need is there. God is there. You're giving us this for that, this for that. That is not this and this is not that. It's a season of this and that. So help us to embrace it. Help us to embrace it. Help us to embrace it. Great. Thank you for inclining your ear to us for inclining your ear to us. Thank you for the covenant you made a long time ago about us. Thank you for the agreement that was made with our name and we are benefactors of that. So help us to grow and become the better. It's in Jesus' name we pray. If you receive that, would you clap your hands like you received today? Come on, put your hands together like you received the word.